Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the Tank Series. My name is Luke with Premium Aquatics. Thanks for joining us. Hopefully you've had a great week. Let's go ahead and dive right into it because this will be maybe a little lengthier because of what we're going through. Um, but we're going to go over the Triton Lab results that I got. If you remember last week, we took some samples of the tank water and we sent it off to Triton Labs to get uh, tested. And I sent it out on a Monday. They received it on Thursday. You get an email notification when they receive it. And then I got an email notification on Saturday, that following Saturday, that they had my results done. So from Monday to Saturday, I had my results, which was phenomenal. I love it. I think that's amazing because it's a pretty quick turnaround um, as opposed to, say, waiting 14 days or something crazy like that. So let's jump right into this. Let's go ahead and uh, go to our Triton Lab account and let's log in. And then once we're in here, we'll see the tank that we registered here and we'll see our latest upload evaluations, which is my ICP test that we did. So let's go ahead and pull this test results up. And here we go. First, we're gonna see this dashboard. Um, this is important because the start off, you wanna choose your habitat here whether you're an SPS dominated reef, LPS, reef with clams, mixed reef, um, soft coral dominant, uh, NPS seagrass, SPS inner, fish only, these are gonna make a difference as to what they recommend and the advice they give you. So you wanna make sure that you do choose this uh, when you're reading your results. So I'm gonna go with soft coral dominant because most of mine are zoanthid, uh, Xenia, GSP, nothing fancy yet. So um, I've got this. We're not going to do anything. I don't really have any issues to deal with right now, so I'm not worried about that. Um, where you can share your analysis and then you can download a PDF statement. But down here is our analysis and our recommendations. And we have our data, help, dose, products, visual. We're going to start off with data. And as we scroll down, we're going to see here on the left hand side our element. And then the analysis that they got, the set point that they recommend for it. And then they get a little color graph here showing you, you know, green, you're good. And as you get further and further down away from what they would recommend. So <clears throat> let's go through all these elements, find if I have any bad ones or if I'm pristine. Good, bad, or ugly. Here we go. Okay, so these are going to be the unwanted heavy metals. First one, bam, tin. We are in the red. Yikes. Uh, we're getting 12. I don't know what that is. Um, and they recommend zero. This, I'm guessing, is probably all to do with that rusty magnet that I happen to find. So, thankfully, if that is the case, that means this is going to be taken care of with some water changes and we'll be good to go. But I bet that was the magnet. So, uh, we are in excess on tin. Let's keep going down. Uh, I did read a little bit on aluminum, 28. Uh, they recommend 0 to 60, so we're technically still in the green, but I did read a little bit of that. Uh, green, 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 green. So we're all good there. Now let's go into the macro elements. Sodium, calcium, magnesium, potassium. Uh, most of these I'm in the green. I'm getting into the light green, starting to venture over to the yellow on some of them like potassium. Um, so they're a tiny bit low, but not bad by any means. So technically speaking, for my system, we're probably just fine because I don't have a lot of calcium dependent and those sort of things. So uh, most of this is all in the green or the light green, a little low on uh, strontium here as well compared to what they recommend. So that could come up as well. Um, let's go into the next Li group. Lithium, nickel, uh, molybdenum. Most of that we're good. We're a little bit high on the molybdenum. And let's go down to the next group. Most of this is good up until iodine. I am in the yellow here. They're showing I'm a little low, which I know zoanthids can benefit from iodine. I've done a little bit of it, but I've always been reserved on iodine because I know it can be very finicky and you can overdose it pretty easily. So always, you know, I always tread it on the side of caution for that. So we could look at that. Uh, next one, uh, barium, I'm at 59. So I'm high compared to the zero, the 10 that they recommend. So I'm getting into the yellow there. Uh, everything else, silicone, okay, uh, this is a good one here, silicone, I am high on, 340, they recommend, they were zero to 200, so I'm inching into the red, which sucks, <laughs> which sucks big time, um, but 
that would mean that I probably need to be going and looking at my RODI system because uh, most of the time that's where it's going to be sourced from. There are some other sources that uh, we'll look at here in a second, but most likely means I need to be testing my uh, RODI, see if silicone is making it through or if my filtrations are exhausted and I didn't realize it. So um, phosphorus, phosphate, we're in the light greens, um, technically could go maybe a little higher according to what they recommend. Um, but not bad there. So that's it for the testing. Very simple, very easy to see. Uh, obviously, the colors are, are nice because it, it's very easy to see uh, what we're doing good and what we're not doing good in. Um, but it's cool that we have this. So that's going over every test. Overall, tank's not bad. Tin and silicone are the biggest concerns of mine here um, out of everything that I tested. Uh, or everything out of everything that was tested, those two I'm going to be the most worried about and want to do something about uh, relatively soon. So next we have health up here. We can click on this and it's going to tell you about uh, elements that are harmful for your tank uh, and what maybe you know we're going to do. They recommend six by 15% water changes and then uh, doing salt uh, with Troutmarin Pro or Red Sea over six weeks. Uh, silicone high are slightly elevated, so we definitely want to be checking out, uh, you know, RODI, like I said, uh, ferric oxide, uh, Sephorax, ceramics, some of those could be uh, also a cause. I don't do any of those, so uh, most likely, like I said, it should be my RODI. Um, Molybdenum is slightly elevated, so that could lead to cyano and some other uh, bacteria growth, which obviously we don't want that, so uh, we want to look at our trace. Uh, element overdose, possibly food, or possibly contaminated salt. So we want to check that out. Um, again, recommend uh, water changes here. Our strontium levels are slightly low, so we'll go to the dose tab. Potassium, slightly low. Tin has been found in the system. Uh, can be dangerous. Uh, we want to find the contamination source, contaminated trace elements, metals near or in the aquarium, such as rusty clamps or screws, or magnets that you think are coated and then they break somehow, and then contaminated salt. So it's good. We know most likely that is because of the magnet. So that's good to know. Uh, so that's it for the help section. Next, we'll go to dose, and this is going to be the recommendations for what they what you should dose in your tank to you know maybe help make it better uh, or or get it back into what they would recommend as far as uh, the parameters go. Uh, so first is um, important for our aquarium. Iodine, uh, recommended doing a dosage of that. Uh, correct dosage of 2.23 milliliters for one day. Uh, daily dose of, two, of 0.22 milliliters. Uh, doo -doo -doo. And nice thing here is they have show me the product to use, which will bring up the Triton Iodine 100 milliliters. Where can I get it? You know where to get it, guys. Premium Aquatics. Let's go. Uh, boron, um, same thing. Uh, the nice thing is, you know, it's going to tell you what the lack is, what this can do for your aquarium. It stabilizes the pH value, can promote color and health in SPS and LPS, and then your doses that they recommend, and again, the product that you want to use. So that's really cool to see that they, they tell you what you're low in, what it's good for for the aquarium, how to do it, and then what to do it, or what to get to do it, I should say. Uh, we're at phosphorus, phosphate, a little bit low, uh, so obviously we have those. Um, then we get into not important, but beneficial for your aquarium. So it's not as super important, but it would be beneficial. Uh, bromine, um, sulfur, lithium, potassium, magnesium, things that were just a little bit on the low side of the scale could go up. So those are um, some of those recommendations that they would have for it. Not necessarily that you have to by any means, but could help you out. Then we get to fine tuning and we have our basic, which these are gonna be just more basic fine tuning to help really hone in this aquarium. Uh, and we're, as you can see here, we, we could fine tune manganese. Um, and then there's an advanced level as well, which this is advanced because it's more dangerous. Uh, this element can be overdone. So usually you want to leave it to professionals or experienced Aquarius at the very least so you don't go and overdose it and cause more issues than what you began with. Uh, so for instance, in this one, uh, nickel. It can improve color image of coral, 
can improve the overall health of LPS and SPS. And another one would be zinc. So these are the ones that would also help fine tune it, but be very, very cautious with it because if you do it wrong, can spill more damage than what you're doing it. So um, cool to look at these. And the nice thing is, like I mentioned before, up here, if we look at our habitat, these are gonna change according to the tank. So if I go to, uh, let's see, SPS, now our very important for our aquarium is potassium, magnesium, strontium. And we wanna raise those because we've got a lot of corals that utilize that. So we wanna get that in check. Uh, and those are becoming the very important. And then the important, and then our, uh, you know, non-importance is gonna, you know, be different. Our um, fine tuning is gonna be a little bit different. So keep that in mind and maybe play around with it. Look at all of them. If you have an inner, you know, a mixed uh, type of scenarios and you just wanna get a, an overall view of what they would recommend for each one, do it. I mean, it's only gonna give you more knowledge. So um, that's why I think this is so beneficial is that it's just giving you as much knowledge as possible to really correct your system as opposed to just saying, hey, here's what's wrong with it, good luck. So I really appreciate that. Um, and then we can go into products. And again, it'll go over the products that they recommend and what we can look at. And again, you can find that here at Premium Aquatics. And then we can go into visual, which will give us our elements and a chart graph down here. And this would be more beneficial if you're gonna do this more than once because then I can click on whatever elements I want to in this chart and it's gonna graph it for me. So if I would say do this every month, I could graph all these or if I wanna just graph the important ones that I like and graph the important ones and see what I'm doing uh, from month to month. So that's pretty cool. Nice to have, you can download the chart, uh, share it with people and you know, you know, get advice from others as well. Uh, always nice to be able to not only have these, but be able to share it. So that's really cool. And I would probably say, uh, you know, I wouldn't do this every week because it would get very, very expensive doing that. But I could see doing it every quarterly, maybe every monthly if you really wanted to, but uh, at, you know, maybe every quarterly or twice a year or something like that to where not only are you getting an in-depth view of how your tank is doing, but you can also cross check it against any test kits that you're having uh, to use for your tank and making sure that your test kits are still uh, reading a you know, consistent with what a lab test would be reading. That's it guys. Overall, tank's looking pretty decent, not terrible for what my system is. I think it's actually pretty good. We just gotta get that silicone in check and we gotta get that tin in check. And that's gonna be happening by water changes now and then checking out my RODI system to make sure that my um, water coming out and seeing maybe what that silicone is reading out of that and see if it's just something that's not getting filtered out or if because my filters are expended uh, and exhausted and I need to change those. So really cool to see guys. I'd highly recommend it. I will put a link in the description below to where you can get these ICP test kits on our website. Uh, highly recommend, pick one up today. It doesn't take much time to get it. You, It takes no work on your end. So absolutely recommend this. Thanks so much for stopping by guys. I appreciate it always. Uh, if you haven't already, make sure to like and subscribe, share the content, Hit that bell for the notification to stay the most update on this system as well as the other videos we're putting out. And as always, stay happy, healthy, have a wonderful weekend, enjoy that weather out there, and I'll catch you next round. Peace.